Finally, the most interesting part in Roblox Studio, scripting. So let's not waste any more time and let's make a script. To do that, let's go in server script service, click this plus button right here, and then click this script button. And now, as you can see, it already gave us a line of code, but what does this even do? So let's actually play the game and see what happens. So after we press play, we can see that nothing happened, but you're wrong. So let's go in the view tab and click this output button right here so that we can see the Roblox console. And as you can see, it actually typed out hello world. So what happens if you change this hello world sentence to something else, like for example, subscribe, if I can actually spell it correctly. And now once you press play, you will see that it prints out subscribe. So what even is this print thing? Well, it's a function that prints out any value that is between these parentheses. So let's try printing another value. So let's make a new line, let's type print, and as you can see, if you try to type a function, Roblox Studio gives you a list of possible functions, and these functions that are crossed shouldn't be used. So let's actually press enter or double click this print option that Roblox gave us and that will autofill the message without actually us typing, which makes our job easier. So let's actually now try printing a number. And that's pretty simple, just type a number in here. And now if you press play, we will see that it actually prints out 100 and it prints out the previous line of code, which is print subscribe. Let's now try printing another value. So type print again and type in true. And now if you press play again, you can see that it, uh, that it also prints true. Also on the right side of each print, we can see some extra information. So after the first word subscribe has been printed out, it tells us that that has happened on the server and that it happened in the script called script because our script is actually called script and it says that it happened on the first line of code which is actually correct and same goes for 100 and for true it says that 100 printed on the server and it happened on the second line in the server in the script called script and also same goes for true so if print prints any value between these parentheses, then what are these values? Well, that's a good question. The first one is a string. And a string is any amount of text that is between two quotation marks. So for example, if I change the word subscribe to literally gibberish, we can see that if I press play, it prints out the exact thing that I typed out. But for strings, you have to make sure that there is a quotation mark at the beginning and one at the end. Alright, the second value is a number value. A number of values can be pretty big, which means, sadly, there is a limit. I don't know what the limit is, but it, it's something like this. As you can see, and when I press play, you can see that it prints out infinity, even though this isn't infinity. And this third value is a boolean value. And there are only two boolean values in Roblox. There's the true value and there's the false value. And these three values, string, number and booleans, are probably the most used values in Roblox scripting, so keep that in mind. Alright, but why are we even learning this if we can't even change a part through scripting? Well, don't worry, I was just about to show you that. So let's actually delete our code that we wrote and let's make a new part in the base plate. Let's also put it in the air a little bit so that we can see it better. And let's actually rename the part. You can rename it in the Explorer tab by clicking it once and that will allow you to change the name. Or you can go in the Properties tab and change the name property. And I'll change it to Tutorial. If you want to give the part your own special name, then you're free to do so, but just don't put any spaces in the name. So don't name the part something like cool space part. 
But for this tutorial, we don't want to have any spaces in the name because it will become complicated. So make sure that the name is just one single word. Alright, now let's go back in the script and let's actually get the part. So how do we do that? Well, it's pretty simple. Just type in game.workspace.yourpartname. Alright, I'm joking, that's a little bit too fast. So let's go step by step. So first, we have to get the game. But why do we have to get it? Well, because our part in, is inside the game. We can't just type in the name of our, of our part, because the Roblox Studio doesn't know where it is. So we have to go step by step trying to get our part. And to do that, we first have to type in, we first have to get the game. And to get the game, we just have to type in game. It's pretty simple. But what even is the game? Well, think of it as an instance that is invisible and that has everything inside of it. So all this stuff that you see in the Explorer tab is inside of the game instance. The game also has a lot more things which aren't shown in the Explorer tab, but we won't be going through those in this video. So the next step, we have to put in a dot. Well, why do we have to put a dot? Because after we get the game instance, this dot specifies that we want to get something that is inside of the game. So after we put in the dot, you can see that there is a lot that there is a list of things that are inside of the game and there is a lot of things but we just need to get to the workspace and to get the workspace simply type in workspace but make sure to spell the word correctly because in scripting basically everything is case sensitive so make sure to type the workspace with an uppercase w because as you can see on the right side in the uh, in the explorer tab you can see that the workspace is typed out with a capital W. So after you typed in workspace, let's get our part by typing dot again and typing the name of our part. And now let's actually try to change one of the properties of the part that we just spawned in. So let's select our part and let's see which property we want to change. So for example, let's change the reflectance property. And let's change this value from 0 to 1 through scripting. So let's go back to our script. And now, after we got our part, let's get the reflectance property of the part. And now to get the reflectance property, type in dot and then type in reflectance. Because that is the name of the property. And now to change the property, we have to put in an equal sign. And as you said, we want to actually change the value to 1, so we just have to put in 1. And that's basically it. So Roblox Studio reads this line of code like this. It gets the game, it then it goes to the workspace, and then it finds the part, and then it gets the reflectance property. And then it sees this equal sign, and it knows that it has to change the value from whatever the current value is to this new value on the right side. And after it reads this line of code, it will change the property from 0 to 1. So let's actually run the game and see what happens. And as you can see, it, the part actually changed its reflectance property. And if you don't believe me, let's select the part. And in the properties tab, we can see that the reflectance property actually has changed. Alright, let's now stop the simulation. And let's change another property. Let's change, for example, the transparency property. So now let's get our part again. And now instead of typing reflectance, let's type transparency. All right, now that we have the transparency property, let's actually change it to a value between zero and one. For example, I'll take 0 0.6. And after we run the game again, you can see that the part is now transparent and it's actually reflective. And if you check the properties tab, we can see that it did the exact thing that we wanted it to do. Alright, let's stop again. And before we change another property of our part, let's actually make our life easier so that we don't have to type in game.workspace.tutorial every single time. And how do we do that? Well, we have to use something known as variables. But what even are variables? Well, think of them as code names that represent a specific value. 
So for example, apples. We know that they are sweet, we know that they keep the doctors away, we know that they are cheap, we know they are red, we know that they are hard, and many, and many other things. Or for example, if you take your phone, actually the name of your phone, we know just based on the name of your phone, we know who made the phone, how old the phone is, how good the camera is, how big the screen is, how good the battery is, and many other things. But how do we even make variables? Well, it's pretty easy. Let's actually make some space in our script. And now, to make variables, first type in local, then type the name of your variable, I'll name it tutorial, and now to set a specific value to our variable, we have to follow the same principle when we changed the properties of our part. So first put in an equal sign, and then let's get our part. And now we don't actually and now we don't need this game.workspace.tutorial anymore. And if you press run again, we can see that the same things happen, but our code is now way cleaner. And you might be wondering why did we type out this local thing before the tutorial variable? Well, don't really worry about that, since it's kind of pretty specific. If you really don't want to use this local thing, then you can. You don't really have to. But because of performance, I really suggest you to use this local thing. Now let's actually change another variable. But what if we want to make the part change its properties very slowly? Well, we can do that by using the wait function. So let's actually wait a few seconds and then change the properties of our part. So let's actually make some space before the part's properties are changed. And now let's actually type in the function wait. See it already gives us the function and then we just press enter. And now between these parentheses we have to put in the amount of seconds we want to wait. So let's wait for example 3 seconds. And let's actually test the game. But before we test the game, let's actually change this wait function to task.wait. You might be wondering, why are we using this? What's the point of task.wait? Aren't these two the same? Well, they are, but task.wait is more precise than wait and it's faster. It, which means that you will have better performance using task.wait. And why is it that way? Don't, well, I don't really know. Alright, let's delete this wait, and now if we run the game, we can see that after 3 seconds, the part becomes reflective and transparent. Let's actually make the part a different color instead of making it reflective. So remove the reflective property and the equal sign and the number 1, and now let's use the brick color property. So type in brick color. And now to set the brick color property to something else, type in equal, and then let's use the color red. And if you press run, you can see that after 3 seconds, it gives us an error. But why? Didn't I put this correct? Well, I put in red. Shouldn't that make the part red? Well, to put it simply, no. So let's go to the output, and let's see what happened. Let me zoom in a little bit, and as you can see, this red text is the error message, and everything else underneath it is where the error happened. So as you can see, in the script instance, that is inside of the server script service, in on line 4, there is an error, and that is correct. But what does the error message say? Well, it says, unable to assign property brick color brick color expected got nil. So what does that even mean? The first sentence basically says, hi, uh, I can't really use this value. And the second one says, uh, you gave me a wrong value, please go check your code. So it expected that to use the brick color value, which is another type of value, but it got the nil value, which is also another type of value. And brick color value is basically what the brick color property uses, and a nil value basically means nothing. 
So let's actually see in the script what is happening. So in the fourth line of code, once we got the tutorial dot brick color property, we tried to change the value to red. But Roblox Studio doesn't know what red is. We didn't specify what it is. And as you can see, there's a an, there's an orange line underneath the word red, which means that it isn't defined. And when something isn't defined, Roblox Studio automatically uses the nil value. So go back up, make some space and type in local again, then type in the name of the variable, which is red, then set the value of the variable by using the equal sign. And now because we need the brick color value, we have to type in brick color and then type in dot new, but we're not finished. We also have to put in parentheses. And then inside of these parentheses, we have to put in the name of the color that we want. So let's actually see which color we want to choose. For example, I'll take really red. And you can see the name of the color and by making your mouse hover over that color or by checking it up here. And now remember the name. Now let's go back to the script and inside of these parentheses, put in that name really red and because names are usually a piece of text that we that means we have to put in a string value so instead of really so instead of just typing really red let's remove that and then type in quotation marks and inside of the quotation marks type in the name of your color and now let's see what happens if we run the game so after three seconds the part becomes red and it becomes a little bit transparent. All right, now let's change another property, that being the size property. But how do we know which value to use? We, well, we can do something that we just did with the brick color property. We can put in something random and once you press run, it will give us in the output the value that we need. As you can see, it expected the vector3 value, but it got nil. So let's now make a vector3 value by typing in vector3 and then to make one, type in dot new. Now again, open up parentheses and now you have to put in three values and each value has to be separated but by commas. So for the first value, it will change the size on the x axis of the part. So let's for example, put in 10 now let's separate the value by using comma. Let's make the second value 20, which will change the part on the y axis. Let's use a comma again. And lastly, on the z axis, let's make the part size 5. And now once you press run again, you will see that after 3 seconds the part will become huge. Let's also change the position of the part. And the value for positions are also vector3 values. So now let's make a vector3 value again. And let's put 0, 20, 0. We shall make the part go back to the center, but it will go in the sky. So if you press run, after 3 seconds, as you saw, it, go, it went up in the sky. And lastly, let's make the part anchored. And to anchor the part, we have to use boolean values. So if we press, if we make, tr if so, if we type in true, Roblox Studio will read this this line of code and see that the anchored property should be anchored. So if we press run again, which is pretty boring by now, but as you can see, the part is in the sky because anchored property is set to true. And that's basically it for this tutorial. I would give you guys a challenge, but there isn't much you can do with this information. But in the next video about loops, I will give you a challenge there. So make sure to subscribe with notifications on so that you can stay tuned on when I upload the next video.